allow me to present a scenario. Picture yourself as a teenager endowed with an extraordinary array of talents far surpassing those of your peers. Now, imagine being confronted with a pivotal choice. Continue leading the life of a typical teenager, indulging in video games and socializing with friends, or harness your exceptional abilities to etch your name into the annals of history as the adolescent genius who outwitted the entire US government. Though reminiscent of the opening scenes of a fantastical superhero saga, this narrative encapsulates the real-life dilemma confronted by Mustafa al-Bassam. His fateful decision would catalyze one of the most sensational cyber attacks on US government entity ever witnessed. Imagine a kid like Mustafa, who didn't spend his time playing soccer like the rest. Instead, he was busy becoming one of the most famous hackers ever. But who's this hacking genius? Mustafa was born in 1995 in Baghdad, Iraq. When he was six, he moved with his family to the UK, settling in Southeast London. Mustafa loved computers from a young age. At just eight, he started messing with computer programs and learning about coding and data analysis. He even built his own websites using software called Microsoft Front Page. He quickly moved from building websites to hacking them. By the age of nine, he was already hacking online. It all started when he needed a calculator for his math homework and ended up hacking the entire website. Mustafa's hacking skills grew each day. He even hacked into his school's website, finding sensitive information like teacher salaries and student grades. Although his school wasn't thrilled, they let him off the hook. But Mustafa wanted more. He found hacker groups online and realized he was better than most of them, even though he was just a teenager. At 13, he joined forces with a notorious online group called Anonymous. They fought for free access to information and took on big companies like MasterCard, who opposed WikiLeaks by launching Operation Payback. Mustafa's involvement didn't stop there. He helped Anonymous bring down the Tunisian government during the revolution of 2010. This was Mustafa's first taste of the real-world impact of hacking, and he was hooked. LC, short for Laughing at Your Security, emerged as a subgroup of Anonymous. They claimed a desire to distance themselves from Anonymous, citing a perceived deviation from the group's core values. However, their actions suggested otherwise, as they seemed to engage in hacking purely for amusement. We do things just because they amuse us, that's the essence of it, they professed. The group consisted of six founding members, among them whom the most adept was the 16-year-old Mustafa al-Bassam. LC often reminisced about an incident where an adversary attempted to breach their website. Mustafa swiftly countered by compressing the hacker's code to a fraction of its original size and sending it back with a curt message. Here, use this. This event merely hinted at Mustafa's hacking capabilities. What initially began as a pastime soon took a dramatic turn, ultimately resulting in the dismantling of the CIA. The origins of Operation Anti-Security, also known as Hashtag Anti-SEC, trace back to LC's initiative to conduct cyber attacks against governments and organizations, aiming to expose classified information. Each attack escalated in intensity, starting with the FBI as their primary target. H.B. Gary, a security contractor for the FBI, became the focus of LC's first strike. The FBI had enlisted H.B. Gary in 2010 to bolster their defense against online hackers. LC's threat prompted an executive from H.B. Gary to publicly challenge them at a computer security conference, vowing to unveil the group's key members. This executive, none other than H.B. Gary CEO Aaron Barr, inadvertently became LC's next target. LC, led by Mustafa, launched a cyber attack on H.B. Gary's servers exploiting vulnerabilities in its security measures. Mustafa discovered that bars lack security practices, including using the same password across multiple accounts, made him an easy target. In a bold move, Mustafa hacked into bars company email and leaked over 70,000 confidential exchanges. The repercussions were severe for Barr, who lost his job and faced death threats, forcing him and his family to relocate. Yet these events were only the beginning of the far-reaching consequences of Operation Anti-Security. 
Their goal, to wage a digital war against governmental bodies and organizations. With each strike escalating in audacity, their inaugural target, InfraGuard, an FBI-associated entity. InfraGuard, a collaborative effort between government and private sector volunteers aimed to fortify the nation's infrastructure. A nonprofit organization that facilitated secure online information exchange with government agencies and businesses. The year 2011 saw LC's offensive against InfraGuard, a direct response to President Barack Obama's proclamation of cyber warfare on criminal elements. LC found themselves in the crosshairs of the U.S. government's cyber crackdown, owing to recent breaches compromising the personal data of millions of Americans, posing a grave threat to national economic security. Unfazed by the looming threat, LC unleashed a barrage of attacks, including clever pranks like impersonating President Obama in calls to the FBI. Their antics escalated as they infiltrated InfraGuard's website, defacing it with mocking messages aimed at the FBI's expense. LC's insatiable thirst for classified information led them to procure login credentials of InfraGuard users, including Karim Ijazi, a renowned hacker illegally operating within InfraGuard and FBI circles. LC attempted to leverage their newfound data trove against Hijazi, but he defiantly rebuffed their extortion demands, opting instead to expose LC's nefarious scheme. Undeterred by this setback, LC's focus shifted to their most ambitious target yet, the CIA, initiating a distributed denial of service DDoS assault. LC flooded the CIA's servers, causing a ripple of embarrassment across the highest echelons of government. Mustafa, a mere 16-year-old, breached the impenetrable fortress of the CIA's digital defenses, capturing the world's attention. While LC basked in the glory of their cyber coup, unbeknownst to them, a traitor lurked in their midst, casting a shadow of doubt over their triumphs and revealing a shocking twist in their crusade against the CIA. Navigating through numerous operations with trusted companions, only to discover that one among them was a double agent, was a harrowing ordeal. Enter Hector Monor alias Sabu, who eventually adopted the moniker Sabu and joined a clandestine group of hackers poised for greatness, Lul Zek, of which he stood as one of its founding members. However, Sabu's path to infamy was fraught with trials and tragedies. Born in Puerto Rico, raised by his 16-year-old father in the New York City projects, shouldering immense responsibilities from a young age, especially after his grandmother's passing in 2010. With the weight of caring for his two young nieces on his shoulders, Sabu resorted to hacking into major banks and engaging in credit card fraud to provide for his family. Yet what began as a means of survival morphed into an unexpected passion, delving into the realm of hacktivism and finding resonance with Anonymous, one of the most significant online hacktivist groups. Interacting with like-minded individuals online, including the 16-year-old Mustafa, Sabu embarked on a journey that led to the formation of Lurzek, playing a pivotal role in its operations, particularly the hacks targeting InfraGuard. However, unbeknownst to Sabu, he was under surveillance. Days after LC's infiltration of InfraGuard, the FBI knocked on Sabu's door, culminating in his arrest. Faced with an ultimatum, Sabu chose to collaborate with the FBI to protect his family, becoming an informant with the primary mission of dismantling LC. To carry out his mission, Sabu continued working with LC, including participating in the CIA hack, all the while clandestinely collecting LC's secret data and chat logs. Mustafa and his fellow LC members remained oblivious to Sabu's treachery. While Sabu's betrayal ultimately led to Mustafa's arrest and trial, LC's fate remained uncertain. Mustafa al Bassam got a 20-month suspended sentence for two years, plus 300 hours of community service. He served his community hours at a nonprofit clothing store for the deaf and blind. He also faced a serious crime prevention order, mandating him to report computer transactions to the police and forbidding him from deleting browser history. In present times, Mustafa's life diverges significantly from the conventional path of a convicted felon. Post-arrest, Mustafa pursued a PhD in scaling cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology at the University College of London. 
Establishing Celestial Labs in 2021, a company leveraging blockchain for Web3 security, earned him recognition on Forbes' list of the top 30 tech entrepreneurs under 30. Paradoxically, Mustafa now counsels companies and governments on cybersecurity, a stark departure from his past as a CIA hacking teenager. He stresses the criticality of software updates to thwart ransomware assaults. Despite his achievements, Mustafa encounters censure for his cyber transgressions against the CIA and FBI, sparking debate over whether he menaces national security or champions cyber justice against authoritarian regimes. Ultimately, our choices, whether trivial or monumental, unveil our underlying principles and motivations. As we conclude this video, we hope you found Mustafa's journey both insightful and thought-provoking. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more captivating content like this, and be sure to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Your support means the world to us as we continue to explore fascinating stories and topics. Thanks for watching.